And we are live. I want to thank you all so much for joining me. Today, we are exploring the last two episodes of season two, episode seven and eight. And I'm really, really excited. I'm excited to see you all here. So uh, I'm a little bit more uh, chill today, more relaxed. Sorry, a little bit more relaxed vibe. So I'm wearing this, my, my comfy little poncho sweater thing that I've got from, from Mexico because uh, I wanted to be comfortable. And maybe I was too lazy to brush my hair and iron my shirt. But that's a conversation for another time. <laughs> I want to say thank you so much for joining me to Michael uh, Nickens. Welcome. Welcome to the live chat. Melissa home. Welcome. We've got uh, we got Miss Norris in the house as well. Mark Wilson. Dori, Dori, thank you so much for your cash app uh, donation. Appreciate you so, so much for that. Um, and thank you for the rest of you who have been uh, donating as well. Um, Angela's in the house. Patricia Perez in the house. We got Silver Blade in the house. Uh, we got a we got a well, we got a we got a good amount of people on here. Excellent, excellent, excellent. If you're ready, oh Trisha, welcome. If you're ready to get going with this, if you're ready to finish off season two, let me see some hearts in the live chat right now, and then we'll get started soon. I uh, sound checked everything. I think everything's good. Actually, I forgot. I need to change the audio to my headphones. And now we should be good. And let me just double check. Everything's fine, right? You can hear me okay. You can see me okay. I'm not too delayed. Maybe be more more in the center here. <laughs> I'm excited. We've we've uh, we've touched on a lot of episodes in the last couple of days. A lot of episodes in the last couple of days, and we have received a lot of beautiful messages from what we are are watching. <clears throat> let me bring the camera down a little bit there you go it's a better um we are oh and let me face it away perfect there you go excellent and uh we saw we saw mary relapse and we saw her be forgiven all over again we've seen simon s starting to change his heart a little bit about about matthew he's still kind of hard hard-hearted but uh he's starting to change a little bit we've seen matthew grow we're seeing Rayma, Rayma uh, learning more and growing more along with Mary. We're watching Thomas uh, be a little bit um, frustrated, right? Right, because he's trying to he's trying to get Rayma's attention, but she's not she's not having it. <laughs> uh, we saw a man being he be healed who couldn't walk for many many years. We saw Simon now. Z Simon Z has joined, right? Joined this the, the group. Uh, Philip has joined the group. We have uh, John the Baptizer, who was going to go fight another fight, and who was captured and is now in um, in a high security prison, right? Because of because of what happened, and now we're seeing Jesus starting to open up about who he is. We're starting to see that he is is now being open about who he is and telling people that he is the Son of Man, and it's exciting because he's pushing a lot of buttons and he's. He's pulling some levers and some people are not happy with him. And we have uh, a lot of enemies being made, right? But uh, but that's okay because we know how the story is going to end. But, uh, but I'm really excited about getting there. So a really quick shout out and thank you to Angel Studios for allowing us to watch this series once again. Um, Angel Studios is has an app. And if you haven't downloaded it yet, please uh, go over and download the Angel Studio app. Um, they have a lot of different series. Some of you have made some suggestions about things you would like us to watch, and we're going to get to it as soon as we're done with with uh, with the chosen. Erica and I are going to go see the chosen tomorrow at six oh five in Orange County. We are excited about that, so we have our tickets to go watch it tomorrow, and we will be providing. We will be uh, making a video, uh, letting you all know our review, and hopefully we can have maybe another conversation sometime in the weekend or maybe next week to talk more about it. But if you haven't purchased your tickets yet, please do so by clicking on the link in the description down below. You don't want to miss this. The Chosen in theaters everywhere. Season three, episodes one and two. We're excited. I'm excited to see who we're going to see there. Uh, we are going to take some uh, DVDs of season one and season two, and we're going to be giving them away uh, to anyone that we might see in person who might want to talk to us on camera as well. So we can make them a part of our video. So if you're in that area, Orange County, uh, l let us know. And then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see, uh, we'll see you there. <laughs> um, all right. So we are, 
We have a full house, 68 of you. If you haven't already, please hit that like button. It'll let YouTube know that this video is popping um, and like popcorn and like popcorn, it'll start letting, know, letting more people know that we are live and inviting more people. We want more people to come to La Familia. Familia, if you all can do me a big favor, put on your headphones and let's get ready. Get your emojis ready. If, if there's an emoji that, can, that will describe how excited you are right now, what emoji would that be? Let me know in the live chat. Let me know in the live chat there as I, as I welcome Crikey, as I welcome Esther. We got S. Elizabeth Allison. My phone just dinged, which reminds me I need to go on do not disturb mode. <clears throat> and here we go. Awesome. <laughs> You all so excited. We got Roxana in the house. Roxana in the house. Welcome, Roxana. We got Patty. Lisa Reynoso in the house as well. Ashley Conway, so happy you all can, jo can join us. Trisha's in the house as well. Hola, so happy to be here. Uh, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, familia. Let's get rocking and or rolling. Uh, let me get to my other screen. Here we go. There it is. That's my other screen. And let me enlarge this really quickly. And let's go. We got MJ in the house as well. Those and fishes. Isn't it fish? Jesus of Naz Nazareth saw for questioning this is where he sits with uh with quintus 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 acquaintance yes i'm here to see quintus that's praetor quintus and you may only request an audience via formal application did you deface and remove a public notice how about now Atticus Emilius Pulcher? Sent all the way to the Upper Galilee. Well, you're behind the times, Quintus. I've been up and down Judea, practically under your nose. Well, I thought you retired. Cohortes Urbani don't retire. That's right. They ship you off to Gaul. Question for you. How do you hold up all that armor with no spine? <laughs> Salty. Salt, not a bad place to retire. I hear the women all have red hair and the music. I'm not here to talk about women and music, though I'm sure you have plenty of time for both. Yes, I do, because I keep things so tight around here. It's how I have time for you. Oh, and well, hail Caesar. Did I hail already? How can I serve him today? I come bearing intelligence. <laughs> how can I serve I him ears. today? Good. Open them wide, Quintus. I've got news. It's about Jesus of Nazareth. Uh-oh. Look at the little smile. Familia, you know what to do. Come on. Put your pain on hold. So if your back hurts, give it a little turn, a little twist. If your feet are sore from working today, move them around. Let's be grateful that we still have movement. If your movement is limited, no matter what, you can move, move it. Oh, baby, Ezekiel is dancing. Go, baby. Go, baby. <laughs> Do your willies if you got them. Do your silliest dance. Nobody's watching. And if they're watching, let them see. Who cares? <laughs> Beautiful. Excellent. All right. I'll go first. Whoa! How are we going to measure it if you throw it in the sea? By the splash. Throw it on the shore. I'm going to win anyway. We'll see. If it's between fishing or hearing rabbi's instructions about the sermon, I'll throw this thing to the Mediterranean. We should all be fishing. Try to avoid anything like what happened to Wadi Kelt. So, throw it, big guy. <laughs> Winner's pick. Yeah. Okay. Go, go. 
Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> the sons of Jonah fish today. Wait, two out of three. <laughs> what if you're our Mercer? Why are we deciding anything? We should all be fishing like Jesus asked. We can't risk messing up his settlement plans. Andrew, I never took you for a soul loser. Easy, little thunder. <laughs> you go listen to Rabbi and get us up when we come back. No, I mean it. Easy Rabbi has told four of us to find food. We should do as he says or, or bad things will happen. Soul loser and superstitious. Not a good look. Not a good look. <laughs> oh, oh, and Simon, we can arm wrestle next time. No problem. That was a terrible suggestion. You don't think I could take at least one of them? Have some faith, man. Faith isn't my problem. Everyone has a part to play in the execution of this sermon. Sons of thunder. Aren't you supposed to still be fishing? We decided they could handle it. We wanted to learn more about what you were planning. Hmm. You won a contest, huh? <laughs> How is Andrew? Eh, we'll get over it. <laughs> so, uh, what have we missed? Z is working on a security plan. Mary and Rama are back at camp working Thank on... Thank you, Matthew. They don't need to hear all the details. Here's what I want each of you <laughs> to understand. And what I want you to make sure that everyone else understands as well. It's the why of this sermon. It's not because we need to make our presence felt here in the region. And it's not about the details of how we make this happen. The details matter. Yes. And all of you will make sure that this is executed well. Mm. But what makes this sermon so important is each person who will be there. Wait, Philip, what? What makes John's sermon so memorable? The volume. <laughs> well, yes, that too. He spoke directly to whoever was there. It was personal. Yes, good. But this sermon will have thousands of people. So I won't be directing it to one group of people over another. But what I will say will be for each and every one of them. They're coming because word is spreading from the signs and wonders. But what I'll be giving to them will be far more important. Truth. Mm. This will define our whole ministry. And that's what we need to focus on. I love that. It's customary to send word ahead when rabbis return to the order. Well, let's just see what happens now that we haven't. <clears throat> Rabbi Shmuel Bar Yosef of Capernaum. <laughs> Well, Shalom, Yusuf. The learned Shmuel returns from Jerusalem. For what reason, we cannot say, but we are honored. For the sardines, where else would I go? <laughs> we do have them pickled in the holy city as well. <laughs> I think Nicodemus made a fish joke upon his last arrival as well. Oh, <laughs> prepare the seat of honor. No, 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 Yusuf, I have done nothing. To you do. were accepted by the great Sanhedrin of Jerusalem for special research. A proposal few are granted. Please. I'm flattered by your gesture, Yusuf, but this is no time for sitting. May I speak with you privately? Well, yes, of course. Accompany me to the Bet Midrash. But why her? She referenced the healing of a leper. Remember? There is no law against healing a leper. But if it was on Shabbat, like he did at the pool, then a pattern has emerged. He can tell us what blasphemy this Ethiopian woman... Tamar. She could be the key to confirming two incidents. But a woman's testimony is worthless. Not if she leads us to the leper. You think someone healed of leprosy would turn over damning information about his healing? Do otherwise would violate the commandment against bearing false witness. With all due respect, teacher, I thought you went to Jerusalem to study false prophecy, not to hunt down this one man from Nazareth of all places. One in the same <laughs> I know he spends time with sinners, but... The Ethiopian. Is she still in Capernaum? Not in Capernaum. The last I heard of her was from Yehuda. He encountered her in Magdal. Why would Yehuda bother to mention it? She was offering testimony on the street. A woman. Blasphemy. It's like a wildfire with this man. Everywhere he goes, we must find her. And if you discover the healing was not on Shabbat? 
Yeah. I hope you will consider sharing your experience in Jerusalem with us. I would like that, Yusuf, but there is one other I must speak with. But I don't know why the grain thing bothers you so much. Jesus didn't mind. The Pharisees did mind. And then report him now. Jesus knows how to handle himself. You don't have to write to his rescue all the time. Seriously? You? The master <laughs> riding to his rescue? Yeah, all right. I did that a few times. I know it doesn't help. You know what they're doing to John. We can't let them do that. We Jesus. won't. Then let's not make a scene everywhere we go. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> his voice is so intense. intense guy. Get used to different, brother. I'm being smart. What? You're smart than Matthew and Thomas. So Matthew's smart now. The Messiah really has come. <laughs> Don't forget I said anything. <laughs> it's just fish. I'm here to request an audience with the Praetor. It's urgent. That's what everyone says. Well, there are signs all over Capernaum saying the man known as Jesus of Nazareth is sought for questioning. I can take your statement. I believe he was last seen in Jerusalem for one of our pilgrimage festivals. When was this? Five days ago. That's outdated intelligence. What? We'll have him in our custody by tomorrow. What's happened? Arrested on what charge? Is there anything else you'd like to report? With all respect, officer, I must know the nature of the charges. If he broke Jewish law, then we must know. We? What do you know of the order of the zealots? The fourth philosophy? I don't understand. Stories and rumors. There are outsiders. What have the zealots got to do with Jesus of Nazareth? Thank you for coming in. Can you see yourselves out, or would you like me to show no, you? No, no, you're on the wrong track. Jesus is dangerous, but he's not a We zealot. can decide for ourselves who's dangerous. Thank you. <coughs> May we question him? Once you have him in custody? Yes, I would very much like to speak with him on behalf of the Capernaum Synagogue. We'll pass that along. Will you really? No. Out. <laughs> Will you really? Mark my words. Do not underestimate him. Do not underestimate this. <laughs> Yeesh. He speaks that language too, right? So what's your plan, Premier? Plan. We're going to walk through that city like we own it. Arrest our man and be home by breakfast, cohort. That is the plan. Have you been to Jodapata? I've seen schematics. It's a very... um. Intense place. Meaning? Well, let's just say the Praetor in Jodapada doesn't have the kind of control Quintus has in Capernaum. How do you know that? I used to have some reliable informants there. What happened? They stopped talking? They stopped living. Tortured to death. One by one. Rome is the enemy in Jodapada, Primi. Not great. Yeah. You know the guys in black and white? Pharisees. They got a lot of them. And the other ones? Sadducees. Yeah, some of those too. And preachers like this Jesus all over the place. Pretty much everyone in the town is on a mission of protest. People you know like I mean? Jesus? <laughs> I'm starting to get the picture. Jesus's camp is just south of the city. Maybe we'll take the long way around. <laughs> now that sounds like a good plan. Is that why you came along? I wanted the exercise. <laughs> I was just wondering Mostly, why they're walking. Peter is just about the most detestable guy in all of Galilee. You sure that is all? I, I like walked along the seashore. If you wanted to avoid Quintus, there's always plenty to drink in a fishing city. <laughs> really quickly, I just wanted to point out, I like the texture of Atticus's cloak thing, cape robe, whatever that is. I love that texture. <laughs> You've got good instincts, Primi. All right. I must admit, I am intrigued by your prey. Jesus of Nazareth? 
I saw a man who had not stood on his own two feet in half a century, bounding like a boy. I watched a martyr throw down his weapon and take a knee. I saw a lunatic's eyes go clear. Jesus of Nazareth did those things. He doesn't strike me at all as threatening or scary. And that scares me. <laughs> Hang on. Just... He doesn't seem threatening and that scares him. He doesn't seem scary or threatening, but it scares him that he's not scary or threatening. How about that? Isn't that something? Like me. I saw a lunatic's eyes go clear. Jesus of Nazareth did those things. He doesn't strike me at all as threatening or scary. And that scares me. Mm. <laughs> well, maybe I'm just interested to see how he'll take to wrist irons. Oh. Listen up, men. Like old times, huh? As he said, no one ever has to guess what's going on in your head. There's nothing in my head. This, it's in our bones. Don't have to think. Must be nice. What? Having nothing in your head. Don't be smart. It's just a sin. <laughs> that leaves true. He plucked the heads of grain at Wadi Kel. Everybody did that. Except Mary. She'd already done her part. You think you're never going to make another mistake in your life? She was gone for days. True. Don't exaggerate. Me not to exaggerate? Are you telling me not to exaggerate? <laughs> that... <laughs> Wow! Look, she went through something horrible and terrifying. And she dealt with it the best way she knew how. She should have gone to Jesus. She knows that now. If you remember, Jesus was disarming crazy Simon of his dagger. Oh, he's the crazy Simon? <laughs> a married man who worked an honest trade. Worked an honest trade dishonestly. <laughs> with Jesus. Unexpected roads. Gambling. Brawling. That also unexpected. You gamble too. And I'll never do it again. And if I'm ever tempted, I'll ask the rabbi for help. I certainly won't do anything selfish. Leaves the group stranded at camp for two days starving or puts Jesus on it. Makes him snap the Pharisees. Who are hunting us down now? He was John's <laughs> arrest and they're not hunting us down. You're so dramatic. What reaches to us? <laughs> that he claimed the title son of God and Lord of the Sabbath. That hunt them down, that put them away. It could completely ruin all the plans for the sun. Erase all the momentum we've gained. That's what I'm afraid of. Jerusalem doesn't even open the mail from Vadikert. Andrew, this is just fear talk. <laughs> I've been at this long time. When they decide they don't like you, it's over. John. John might spend his life in prison. But Herod arrested John, not the Sanhedrin. Sanhedrin arrests people all the time. <laughs> Oh, oh boy. You're the one who told me he was the Messiah. Am I going to have to be the one to remind you now? The very fact wow. that he's the Messiah means there's going to be trouble. You get it? Yeah. Maybe even a war. If you were building an army, would you start with little James and Thaddeus? <laughs> you think he's drawing up military plans all the time he goes away to desolate places? He never comes back with anything. You know what? Let's just fish. All right, can we? I could watch these two all day. Like if there were a series called Simon and Andrew, I would watch that series from beginning to end and, and pray that it goes on for many, many seasons <laughs> because I love watching them argue. I love watching Andrew's uh, sarcasm. And by the way, in the merch store, I made a shirt that says uh, Simon Andrew's Fishing Company. If you want to support the channel, check that out. Get get your hands on some. But I, I love the dynamic between these two, especially Andrew's sarcasm and his like, his like, oh, okay. Well, oh, don't exaggerate, huh? Who's exaggerating now? Like, he's so animated <laughs> and I love it. He's so animated and I love it. I love it. I absolutely love it. But um, I have a quick question for you all, Familia. So as is tradition in me uh, watching the show with you all, he says, that he will never gamble again. So I want you to think about maybe the situations that you are tempted by, okay? But he said, I will not gamble ever again. And if I'm ever tempted, I will talk to the Messiah about it, right? So he's saying, if I'm ever tempted about gambling, I'm going to go and ask Jesus to help me. What do you think Jesus would do or say to help him? How would, how would Jesus help him? 
the uh the best answer gets a free air guitar <laughs> what do you think how do you think jesus would help him with his temptation to want to gamble again and, and you're and feel free to use your own examples of how jesus has come to you or how jesus has helped you with uh with your temptation Michael says, go and sin no more. Right? But knowing Andrew, he'd probably be sarcastic and he'll say, oh, okay. He says, go and sin no more. Why did I think of that? <laughs> right? Um, uh, Melissa says, I think Jesus is already helping Andrew by having them all fish. It would have been better if John and James gave up their own will and just obeyed. That's true. That's very true. He would give him the strength to not go through with the temptation. Mm. Okay. Simon, let's go fishing for men. Stay focused. Ah, good. That's a good one. Reminding him, right? Point out the blessing in Simon's life. So why gamble? Hmm. That's right. Uh, the biggest gamble you'll you'll ever make is by believing that I am who I am. Ooh, you you took us a little deeper than than, <laughs> than what I thought it would yield to the whisper. It depends how Jesus helps us through our te our temptations. We talked about how Jesus had more temptations than man does, right? Because he could be tempted to do divine things whereas we will only be tempted to do human things right to our human limitations and jesus has the human temptation plus divine temptation it can't be it couldn't have been easy being him right and yet he says take up your cross and follow me right and he's telling you like i feel like that with that he's saying do as i do right holy spirit and jesus help me i ask them to give me an obedient heart and strength to self-discipline Self-discipline, though. Ah, self-discipline. When I think of gambling, I think of taking bad risks for wrong reasons. Ooh. Okay, see, I love that. We're going deeper into our thinking, and we're going deeper into why that thing tempts us, right? Because if somebody tempted you with, with, uh, with, I don't know, with a, with a used shoe, Say, I'll give you this used shoe. That's not really a temptation to you because you have no value over it, right? You don't, you don't give it any value. But if you value something like gambling, then, then the issue, I think, can be resolved with, with how you see gambling, right? Or how you see that addiction, right? Yes or yes? Maybe. Okay. Thank you so much for your answers. I think Erica will continue posting your, your answers if you have uh, any, any more. Let's, let's continue. <laughs> Don't forget to fish for the like button and then press it when it comes up. <laughs> uh oh. Andrew, my little brother whom I love very much. <laughs> what? What? I need you to take a very long deep breath. Can you do that? What? Why? Just please. Ask God to give you. Now, a few days face. will be plenty of time. Make sure everything goes smoothly. Ooh, Melissa, I love that answer, by the way. Whoa, 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 whoa. That is, I'm sorry, I gotta pause this because that's a great answer. That is a great answer, especially you're speaking my language because when it comes to the things of God, I always call them secret doors. Every single time that something happens where I'm needing something and then someone something happens, and Erica can vouch for me on this, I always say, God just opened up a secret door. He has secret doors all over for me. Obviously, this is not, I'm not trying to start a new religion or a new belief saying that, that there are actual doors. I just call these opportunities, these blessings, open doors, right? So I'm constantly see seeing uh, doors everywhere. But I love that, right? Because when, when temptation knocks at the door of your mind, you're asking, Jesus, can you, can you get that? Why? Because he can, he can overcome it. If you overcome every, everything, he can overcome that for you, right? I love that. I absolutely love that. Plus, you don't get to touch it, right? You don't get to deal with it. You don't deal with it face to face. I'm not saying you're avoiding it. 
but at least you don't answer its call. I love that because it is sort of like a calling. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. It's fantastic. Okay, let's go. Um, I'm going to pull this back just a few seconds. Here we go. Uh... Tranquilos. That's the that's the universal sign for take it easy. Don't be afraid. Tell everyone to keep planning. I'll be back. I knew it. Hey, I knew it. Get it together, man. Keep it together, man. Jesus of Nazareth, you were sought for questioning by a Roman authority. Will you surrender to detainment peacefully? Yes. Jesus, no! Are you armed? I am not, but some of my followers are. Tell your followers to drop their weapons and step back ten cubits. I will. May I say goodbye to my Ima? Mater mea. Did he just speak in his native yes. language? Don't be afraid, Emma. James and John, drop your weapons and step back ten cubits. Matthew is safe and doing well. He's back at the camp. Oh, <laughs> I didn't notice that the first time around. Oh, look, underfed. Filthy. We had a bit of a hungry spell, but we have men out on the water now stocking us up. He's used to eating well. Oh, <laughs> what do you have to offer him? Should we talk about this later? Move out. Did you all see how he handled that? He handled that brilliantly, right? He told everybody to calm down. He stayed calm, right? They asked him if he would go peacefully. He said, I will. He told his disciples, hey, tranquilos, relax. I'll be fine. Before anything, he told them, don't be afraid. Just make sure everyone keeps planning, right? Um, he, he told his mother not to be afraid, right? When he was asked if he was if he had carried any weapons, he said, no, he could have just said, nope, I don't. And left it at that. He says, but some of my followers do, right? He was, he was completely responsible. He was being responsible. And he asked them to drop the weapons and step back, right? So that they can do their job. He's letting them do their job because he knows that he's not, that he's going to overcome this, that he's going to be back. He just knows it, right? So when Jesus tells you, relax, don't be afraid. You don't be afraid and you relax. That's what you do, <laughs> right? I know that it's hard. It's hard when we're dealing with something. I know that it's extremely challenging to stay calm when, when the world around you seems to be falling apart, when it seems to be crumbling. But when Jesus says, don't be afraid, you do your best not to be afraid, right? Can I get some hearts in the live chat? If you 
if that vibes with you, if that connects with you. Let's see. Let's go back to the screen here and let's get another. What happened? He stood there and did nothing while he was arrested. He was specific. Detained, not arrested. Those are just words. Have you no experience with Rome? We have to go after them. We agreed to surrender. Hang on, excuse me. Can somebody tell Simon to stop flexing? I mean, why is he flexing all the time? <laughs> not arrested. Those are just words. Look at those triceps, man. Have you no experience with Rome? <laughs> we have to go after them. We agreed to surrender peacefully. No! No! What if they change their minds? Have you forgotten what they're doing to John? You're terrifying her. I'm yeah. Fine. Well, I'm going. They're headed north. I'll catch them in Jotapata and petition for this release. Andrew, he didn't ask you to help. He shouldn't have to! Oh, calmado. I don't recognize any of you. Brother, you're not yourself. Maybe I should come with you. I feel responsible. You might be responsible. Andrew, Yo. could you leave? Stop this right now. It isn't anyone's fault. Mary, please stay. I, I love you, Andrew. I had lots of experience waiting for my rabbi outside jails. Why <laughs> wait? Let's break him out. No. Don't wait up. I love how Simon spoke to his brother, like with authority. He was just like, mm, tranquilo. Wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Excuse me, friend. Shalom. Oh, behold our affliction and wage our <laughs> battle. For you are God, the Redeemer, the Mighty One. We're from Jerusalem. We're looking for... It us to return our Father to your He does Torah, this every day. King, <laughs> to your service and bring us back It's okay. To we'll find someone else. Father, I like that in this city. Have you seen any Ethiopians around here? Not many. <laughs> I knew it. What about a woman? Impossible to miss. Lots of jewelry, very striking, very loud. Gets men like you upset? <laughs> yes. I'm not sure what could be clearer than the three words, I will be back. That's four. How can you dispute that? Maybe it was a hint that we are supposed to be the fulfillment of those words. Zealots and your secret handshakes and quotes. I am not a zealot anymore. Just zealous. As a diff you just interpreted plain speech about trust and peacefulness as code for insurrection. I think he's on to something. Rabbi told us how important this sermon is. We can't let anything stop it. Maybe it was a hint. You're not going to keep me from another obvious fight, are you? With these skills, we could do it. James and John, be mindful of what he named you. Seems perfect for a time like this. I think we should do what he said and wait here for him. Oh, yes, great advice coming from someone who disappeared for two days. How dare you? Don't wow. talk to him like that. Oh, now he speaks. Suddenly, he has a voice. When it's about her... You've made mistakes, too. Boys, stop it. Boys? You're acting like children. Nathaniel's right. The words were plain. You weren't there. So now it's a matter of whose testimony is more credible? Now look. Hello. His you mom is... <laughs> I only made an observation. I made a mistake leaving camp. I was wrong. I'm sorry, I relied on my own observation, my own understanding so heavily. Jesus said he will be back. And you either, you either trust them or you don't. And right now it doesn't seem like they trust them very much. Oh, I love that shot. Don't worry about that. We're here for God. The supreme. We don't get in the way of either. Where should we go first? Jail. Come on, it's this way. I love that Philip went with him. He's probably the best 
this person up to calm him down. Remove from us sorrow and sighing and reign over us justice. Andrew. They say we're extreme. My own mind. Look at him. He can stand. It was faith that delivered this man a miracle. Now that's more like God it. Did this. I know her. I'm quite and him. Who cares? Come on, we have a rabbi to find. We heard he consorts with Samaritans. I cannot personally confirm that, but it wouldn't surprise me. Who cares who he ministers to? I was paralyzed for 23 years and I stand You're before talking you now. About I do Jesus. Be. Who on earth can claim authority to forgive sins? The kind of person that can tell a paralyzed man to stand and the miracle happens in front of dozens of witnesses. Could be witchcraft or sorcery. Witches and sorcerers are required payment for their services. And he gave freely. But wow. why is he in hiding? Yeah, we don't service. know. He told the leper on the road to keep the healing a secret. And then why are you telling people? He gave us no such order to remain silent. I believe that he will make himself more known soon. I can <laughs> sense it in my spirit, and you, you were there in Capernaum. Talk to you. This man can attest he was a witness. Yes. Where is he? Uh, you know this Jesus of uh, Nazareth. Is he here in Tetapanat? Tell him. Please come with me, both of you. You must stop drawing attention to Jesus. How can we not speak about what we have seen? How can you remain silent? The Romans? Oh no. What happened? We'll tell you all about it. Why don't we go somewhere a little more? Right. I love Philip's just calm yeah, and cool, going? collected personality. Here we go. Exist? No, Dominus. And his followers? Peaceful. And compliant. Who? Have a seat. I'm not used to that. Leave us. Jesus of Nazareth. We finally meet. Here I am. <laughs> I thought you'd be sort of Taller, crazier looking, <laughs> wild hair and animal skins. Glad I could disappoint you. <laughs> the first story I ever heard about you. I didn't believe it. That's usually how it goes. It wasn't about religion or preaching or God. It was about fish. Ah, another common theme. It was an impossibly <laughs> huge catch at it is. It settled the largest debt in Capernaum's ledger. Uh, did you meet Atticus? He's Cohortes Urbani. They're like Caesar's personal detectives, mostly in Rome, but uh, they go wherever. He's especially interested in you. Have you ever visited the Far East, Jesus? I have received visitors from there, but uh, never been there myself. They eat their fish raw, peel off the scales, cut off the heads and tails and take a bite. It's quite something. They eat the flesh and spit out the bones. Of course. If Simon of had course. not settled his debt, that could have resulted in my demotion. That was flesh. You create a public disruption that results in damage to property, a stampede, and a blight on my personal reputation. Hmm. Bones. You seduce the single most brilliant and effective tax collector in the entire Upper Galilee. Also, bones. And now, the most tenured cohortis urbani in the history of the Roman Empire tells me he personally witnessed you disarm a zealot Sicarii. Wow. That's flesh. That's flesh. Sorry to have caused so much confusion for you over flesh and bone. Confusion? No. No. If your race weren't so repugnant and odious, I'd offer you a job. I cannot take that as a compliment. Jesus, this whole thing <laughs> is very simple. You seem to be splitting your time between creating headaches for Rome 
and victories we could not achieve ourselves. That's a literary doctor. You've doubled your following since leaving Capernaum. Then again, you returned a violent man who had been terrorizing Jericho to his senses. But word of your miracles or whatever has spread all through Syria. And they or start whatever. coming over here. Do you see my problem? I don't know whether to eat you or spit you out. Stick to the fish metaphor. But we're probably past that now. I'm saying I don't know what to do. <laughs> That's going to be a lot of people's problem with me. Ooh. No more bones, Jesus. Follow me. No more draining my talent pool, creating spectacles, crowds. No more meddling. Hmm? I cannot promise any of these things. And I Attic cannot promise you won't stop breathing. Atticus kind of liked that answer. He's kind of, I, I have a feeling he's kind of boy crushing it. <laughs> A little bit here. Watch. Let me go back so you can see that little smile when he says, "I cannot promise any of these things." Atticus was like, "Like I like this guy. He's like he he he's calm. He's talking to Atticus like nobody. Uh, Atticus to Quintus like nobody talks to him, right?" My he talent pool, creating spectacles, crowds. No more meddling. Hmm? I cannot promise any of these things. Look! 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 look. Look, 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 look. <laughs> and I cannot promise you won't stop breathing. Well, it sounds like we're clear on what we can and cannot promise. <laughs> <laughs> Not the answer. Go, Jesus of Nazareth, I like you. <laughs> we're on the same team. Just don't make me kill you. I won't make you do anything. But my father, on the other hand, I don't know what that means, but let's leave on a high note. <laughs> I think we have an understanding here. You're free to go. Oh, Atticus is like, wait, 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 wait. Oh, sorry about your cousin, by the way. Marching himself into Herod's court and moralizing not a very wise or brave thing to do. He knew what he was getting himself into. Do you know what you're getting yourself into? It was a privilege to speak with you today, Quintus. <laughs> he, he stood up. He sat up like, huh. Wow. That was fun. So nothing about him concerns you, huh? If it did, I wouldn't have let him go. It'd be a nice diversion for the people for a while. <laughs> he just laughs. He just laughs. I love that whole interaction. He threatened him, or he threatened Jesus, and Jesus was like, well, I guess it's clear on what we can and cannot do, right? Or we should or should not do. He's not He's not afraid, obviously. There's no fear in him. He's walking away, and then Quintus tried one last thing to try to get under his skin, saying, like, I'm sorry about your, your, your cousin. And of course, Jesus loves his cousin, and he thought he was going to get uh, under his skin but he said hey well he knew what he was getting himself into and when he said what about you do you know what you're getting yourself into he didn't even answer the question he said it was a pleasure meeting you today and Quintus was like oh it's like yes it is isn't it isn't it really a pleasure to, to meet me <laughs> it's brilliant brilliant work here <laughs> What are you all doing here? We were hearing stories about the man from Nazareth. From the Ethiopian woman and the man who claimed to have been killed. Where have they gone? They all disappeared with the curly hair. They knew they were going to be exposed. In what direction? Beyond those colonnades. Hurry. Brothers! See? Wait! Uh oh. Are you looking for a man who performs healings on Sabbath? Yes. Who are you? Has he invoked the title Son of Man from the prophet Daniel? You have yes. witnessed How this? Did you know? Is he here? We are from Bodikert. Where? 
Why haven't you filed a report? We did. We're a small town. He healed on Sabbath in our synagogue. And it got even worse from there. And there are women among his followers. Three, to be precise. Tell us everything. But Lord of the Sabbath, son of man, are religious scandals. No importance to Rome. We don't know why he was arrested. Rome may feel threatened as word spreads. I don't know. But you can't keep doing this. Not I now. I cannot keep what I know inside. Don't you understand what I'm explaining? I'm not a child. It's dangerous. More than you know. Don't be alarmed. My name is Yusuf. You're a Pharisee. From Capernaum. I spoke harshly to you at the house of Matthew. Don't worry about it. I'm not. You're being sought for question. For <laughs> what? Testimony about Jesus of Nazareth. I told you. One of Nicodemus' former students named Shmuel has come in search of you. He will twist your testimony to make an argument about false prophecy. False? I personally do not care about your convictions and your testimony is worthless. What Shmuel wants is information about another healing and Jesus' background. We both grew up in Egypt. I, I, that's even worse. <laughs> Andrew, get her out of here. I don't trust you. He's all, he's all like, and your testimony is worthless, you know, because you're a woman and all. <laughs> Why are you happy? That's my business. But so that you'll do as I ask. I believe my rabbi Nicodemus saw something remarkable in your master. Shmuel is threatened by what he can't comprehend. Worse, he's ambitious. Shmuel does not honor Nicodemus' teaching. You are the paralytic man Jesus healed. Yes. Both of you must leave this place. You should go with Andrew. What do you do? I'll lay low. Disappear until things go quiet. Lord, things don't go quiet. I hope they don't. But it's a good idea. We separate for now. Just take her with you. I don't know if... I do want to follow him. You will talk to him. Go oh, now. He's uh, not here. Who are you? <laughs> Okay, then. Fill me in on the road. Yeah. Good call, Yusuf. The heartbeat. Boom, boom. He's back. Teacher, are you hurt? What happened? Well, I suppose I should not be surprised that you would spot me. Hi, Ima. Oh, Rabbi, are you safe? Did anyone follow you? Yes, I'm safe. And they just wanted to talk. I'm very happy. <laughs> I'm glad, Matthew. Just talk? Quintus wanted to talk, yes. But the Romans, they don't find me much of a threat, which is fine. Hopefully that'll change soon. So, what were you doing out here? Praying, John. Remember, there's a big event to prepare for. Rabbi, with all due respect, you couldn't have told us that you were back first? You were grabbed by Roman soldiers with weapons. We were... All worried sick. Did I not tell you that I would be back? Yeah. To keep planning? <laughs> You're all going to have to learn how to do this, regardless of what's happening, good or bad. Things are only going to get more difficult. You can't just shut down when you're fearful. Tell us. And what are you going to do when I'm no longer here? Yes, we are still figuring this out. Yes, but we can do better. We... We will do better. Rabbi, Philip said the baptizer gave his followers a prayer in addition to the daily traditional prayers. Perhaps you could do the same. Yes, I'd like to learn more about what you're saying when you're out alone. Now, now you're behaving like true students. There you this go. is what I like to see. And prayer is the first step. And getting the mind and the heart right. It's why you see me go to it so often. 
to teach us to pray like you do. Please. When we pray, we want to be sure to first start with acknowledging our Father in heaven and his greatness. So you can say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. And we always want to be sure to do God's will and not our own. So we say, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And just as we ask. I love all that. <laughs> Rabbi, sorry to wake you, Matthew. Are you in trouble? Shh, shh, shh. I don't want you to wake the others. Nothing is wrong. Why did you wake me up and not the others? I've been forming fragments of teaching in my mind for some months now in preparation for the sermon. I'm ready to organize them. I'll get my writing materials. You've just returned from detention. Will these teachings make things worse? I'm here to make things better, not worse, Matthew. But I mean, for all of us who love you. No promises. Let's go. It must be tonight. He said, let's go. The time has come. Ah, love it. I will leave the the... The credits, let the credits roll. But I love this. I absolutely love the way that he said, look, you, you all have to learn how to do this when, whether things are easier or things are tough. I'm paraphrasing, of course, but we do. We do need to learn to. You are about to watch the season two finale. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Dallas. We will, uh, we'll get back to you in just a bit. Um, you know, he's, he's reminding all of us, of course, through the show, that that it doesn't matter whether we are we have a good season or we're having a bad season it doesn't matter if we are struggling with our personal problems or if we are thriving none of that matters we have to stay focused and we have to do well i'm sorry we have to stay focused and we have to keep following we have to keep following and walking our path the path that he has specifically designed for each and every one of us we can't turn away when things get tough and things will get tough right things will get really challenging but we have to stay focused and we can't we can't let the bad things that happen to us distract us from from our path i love that and then plus i've been very specifically interested in i've been very interested in his prayers lately, uh, so I, I I looked at the Lord's Prayer a long a while back, analyzing sort of analyzing it sort of in this way that he's he's describing it, and I love that I love that that prayer because yes, it's teaching us how he prayed, and I'm learning through his prayer in John 17 how he prayed so that I can pray in the same way that he prays. And he's always acknowledging the Father. He's always praying to the Father. He's always asking uh, for protection. Uh, you know, and in that prayer, asking, so we're asking, give us this day our daily bread, which is the spiritual bread, right? Feed us spiritually. And forgive us our trespasses. Forgive what we have done as we forgive those who trespass against us. And then it raises the question, do we? Do we forgive those who trespass against us? If we're not, then that prayer is, you shouldn't, in my opinion, I have no business praying that if I'm not, if I'm not forgiving others for their, for their trespasses, then I shouldn't be forgiving, be forgiven for mine, right? Lead us not into temptation. So of course, God will never, our father would never lead us into temptation and it's saying, deliver us from evil, right? And when we find ourselves in a bad place, where we find ourselves 
in the talons of evil that he come and deliver us from it. Right? So I, I just, I love breaking these, uh, these prayers down because it gives us a little bit of insight into what it, what we're actually saying. And it doesn't become mechanical, you know, nothing against our, our Catholic brothers and sisters, but that's what I got when I was a Catholic. Um, I felt like everything was just mechanical, kind of like the Pharisees that are just praying there that you see praying there. They're just saying the words, right. And while they might have a good intention and they might uh, want those things to come true when they become mechanical and there's no spirit in that prayer you might as well just be praying the abcs or twinkle twinkle little star i'm not trying to be cynical but you might as well be doing that if you if you're not putting spirit into what you're saying it has to be and and one thing that i've learned about prayer is is not just simply praying for the thing that's bothering me so if i'm if i'm in pain if i have a knee pain and it's keeping me from working or keeping me from getting through my day-to-day -day stuff. I'm not just going to say, sit here and say, father, please heal my, my knee pain. When I pray, I pray for anyone who's suffering, for everyone, sorry, for everyone who's suffering in the way that I'm suffering, that I'm praying for anyone who might have knee pain, whether it's mine that gets healed or not, doesn't matter. What matters is that if anybody else is suffering in the way that I'm suffering, let them be healed. And maybe I might receive a little bit of grace and my knee will be healed as well. But my point being that uh, praying for others is what's important. Praying for others that are dealing with your situation. To not just, not just pray for, for your cancer or for the cancer of a loved one, but anyone else who might be suffering from the same cancer. To not just pray for your financial situation, but to, to pray for anyone else who might be suffering in the same way that you're suffering or worse, who might be homeless currently, right? So it's about adding everybody else to that prayer, not just praying for yourself. Well, I'm going to speak for myself, not just praying for myself, but praying for anyone else who might be suffering in that same way. So whenever somebody in, on here tells me, you know, pray for my brother who's who's going through addiction. I don't just pay, pray for that person's not a brother. I do add them to the prayer, right? But I'll make sure that I add everyone else who's struggling with with addiction, who might be struggling with whatever that whatever that situation is, and then I add that brother to that specific prayer prayer. Because it's not just about praying for that one person, but for anyone who might be suffering in the spirit of that that pain, right? Um, I don't know how you all see this, um, but when I'm in that prayer, I see that suffering as a disease in general. So anyone who's dealing with with uh, anger, they've been infected by this disease, right? By the sin of anger. So I pray for anyone who might be suffering this disease or someone who might be suffering, um, you know, the disease of envy or jealousy or 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 anything sexual and all that other stuff, right? So that's uh, that's what I've learned. I hope that helps you all in your journey. We're, we're about to finish this last episode of season two. It so far has been a pleasure sitting here and, and breaking down these, these episodes with you. I love that I'm able to ask you all all these questions and I love that I'm able to, to have these conversations with you all. I, I enjoy this setting so much. I'm going to go back to, I'm going to get back to having conversations with, with, uh, with guests. So I'm, I, I look forward to having um, either, you know, pastors, pastors, um, authors, uh, musicians. I'm hoping that maybe I can get uh, some of the cast of the chosen to come and join me for a conversation so we can learn more about the show. Um, I really enjoyed the conversation that I had with Dallas Jenkins the last time we reviewed this. Uh, I think we're, we're due for another conversation. Um, if I can, I, I want to maybe speak to the directors of photography, the uh, people who worked on the wardrobe. I mean, just so many different conversations that we can have. So I'm, I'm looking forward to having more uh, spirit led conversations with, with guests. I, I just love learning from you all. And I love uh, having more conversation and seeing how other people 
glorify God and how other people uh, pray and how other people write songs and all of that stuff is really interesting to me. So I, I, I look forward to, to having that. Um, and so we're in the middle of this. I'd like to take a moment uh, to thank you all for the love and support that you give this channel, whether it's you just hitting the like button. Okay. It could be just that easy. You hit the like button. It lets YouTube know, Hey, somebody likes this and it lets other people who watch the same stuff that you do. It lets them know. And it, it, it promotes this channel and it helps because you never know who is going to come to the channel and be saved next. Okay. And I'm not just talking about saved as in like find Jesus, but saved because they strike a conversation with someone and they're saved from their, from their anger, from their greed, from whatever it may be, whatever suffering they have. Uh, the other way of supporting is by leaving a comment in the comment sections of the videos uh, or sharing the video with a friend, just sending them the link. Uh, also watching the videos from beginning to end. If you have commercials, watching the ad or just letting the ad play, that helps the channel and it costs you absolutely nothing to do that. The other way to, to the other way to support the channel is by becoming a member in the YouTube you, either a YouTube member or a Patreon partner, which is just a, a small commitment. You can make a, a a $2 commitment or a $3 commitment or more if you want. Um, I know there are a lot of people who, who have donated a lot more and sponsor the channel month to month. The, and that is greatly appreciated. And there's some perks and I know that I, I've, I've fallen behind on some of the stuff, but I, I appreciate your patience with me. Um, the other way is to just make a one-time donation uh, through PayPal cash app or Venmo. Um, it, it helps uh, the channel it helps make sure that we can continue making videos for you all and uh it helps support the family so i appreciate you all so so much um for anything that you could do to help okay you're not obligated to help in any way but i do appreciate any any help that you get the other way to do it is by supporting our sponsors so today's sponsor is angel studios and angel studios it has an app that you can download to watch other uh family friendly series and and movies and uh, participate in what gets made next. So if you can download the Angel Studios app and take a look through some of the stuff there, that's another way that you can help. And then also, uh, because they are sponsoring the channel currently, anyone who buys tickets to go watch the chosen season three, episodes one and two, is not just helping the channel, but helping uh, the people from the chosen create more episodes, more beautiful episodes, and continue the, the awesome quality that they have right now, right? That they're that they're having so um so i will definitely um, appreciate any way that you can help um <clears throat> yes all right so if you're ready to go let's uh let's rock and roll let's do this uh episode uh, eight season two beyond mountains let's go let's do this Wow. 40 talents. And you can keep the Western Ridge for whatever it is you love so much about it. It's a beautiful view of the sunrise. You can't <laughs> eat a sunrise. <laughs> Believe me, I know. <laughs> what is your lineage? We are here to talk price, not family history. This is about my family. Your tribe. Simeon? These acres have been under the tribe of Reuben for 40 generations. I'm not about to surrender it to the little brother. <laughs> we can talk ancient birth order all you want, but it won't put a meal on your family's table. 55 talents. 45. We will send a team of servants to help you move. What is it that you want from this land? All rocks, barely anything grows here. That's right. But things that do grow, what happens to them? All that grow? Eventually. They die. We're here to cut tombs into these rocks. For the middle class. All the way out here. Only the wealthy can afford tombs close to the cities. And more and more of the middle class are dying. Deep in tax debt. Left with no money for a proper burial, these families are surrendering their beloveds to paupers' graves. We're here to provide an affordable solution. Even if it's far away, it's... Better than a pit 
entwined with other disintegrating bones. What's to stop me and my sons from carving the tombs? Why haven't you? Do you have the tools? The expertise? Capital for hiring laborers and dozens of stone cutters? Fifty talents. Forty-seven. Final offer. Forty-nine. Suppose you find copper and lead when you do. I said forty-seven. You can contact me tomorrow when you change your mind. Wait. He has a point. Land could be worth more if there's something underneath, like he says. Copper or salt. He's not wrong. Our business has a reputation of doing things the right way. I'd be willing to part with a few more talents on the off chance there is something valuable under all this rock. This is all the promised land. No matter how it looks to you. 49. More than 10 years wages, Hushan. Let's draw up the covenants. What's wrong? That word, covenant, I was thinking about the promise made to Abraham uh. and all the other promises. And you can talk to your rabbi about that. <laughs> now, let us close the covenants and post a fair deal for everyone. Uh oh. Familia. Come on. Describe what you're doing. You dancing? You doing something silly? Are you doing the robot? Are you pop locking? <laughs> I don't know. That was what I look like pop locking, I guess. Are you doing the mashed potato? Are you doing the twist? Baby Ezekiel over here. <laughs> oh. Baby Ezekiel over here in the house. Oh. And <laughs> Raising the Rufus. <laughs> Popcorn making, dancing in my chair. Hands up in the air. Hip swaying, nice. <laughs> you guys, y'all have good good moves. You're going to wake the whole camp with your chopping. <laughs> Put the shirt on before the women get up. Oh, they're already up. I heard them studying in their tent. Why do the women feel so strongly about study? It's not enough to just listen to our rabbi. When would they do that? He's never here. You know, your obsession with exercise, it smacks of Hellenism. I'm just trying to stay ready. What if the Romans change their mind and do what they did to your old rabbi? Can you please not bring that up? The mind oh. and the spirit are more important than the body. How can you have a healthy mind if you don't have a healthy body? I'm talking about emphasizing one over the other. Try eating a whole bush of poisonous berries and then tell me how your mind is doing. What's with the chopping? Oh, did we interfere with sleeping in? Breakfast, <laughs> boys. Blessed are you, Lord our God, ruler of the universe. Okay, let's just rush through that. In your wood, guys. The stack for the next travelers. Tonight is going to be our last night here. Hey, kids? Yes. Rabbi told me last night. He told everyone. Where's Matthew? He went away early this morning with Rabbi. Why does he always take Matthew? And since when did you start caring about Matthew's whereabouts? Big Thunder just does the same thing. You didn't ask about everyone else. Did you sleep okay? <laughs> it was like this when I woke up. Jesus sent little James, Thaddeus, and Nathaniel ahead to find a location for the sermon. All right. Do we all know what we're supposed to do? I don't know, Simon. Maybe listen. Keep talking to me like that. 
I know what needs security on all <laughs> four points of the compass. You know how to execute that, Z. The crowd is going to be bigger this time, the way the word is spreading. What do we do with hecklers? Uh, the odd Pharisee used to come to these things. They used to be all over John's sermons. John would heckle them. I just said used to. Jesus can handle Pharisees. We need to get this right, huh? No mistakes. My shame was not hiding hidden hidden from you when I was be I being made when I was being made in secret in in the woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my form, not my unformed substance. How do you have this memorized? I've been memorizing the rest of that Song of David. Need more words, more tools. I can't let it happen again. Mary, you've got to stop dwelling on. Oh. Your eyes are my unformed substance. So my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me. My frame was not hiding. You and Mary have been so good to me. Of course, we're happy you're here. Um, do we all have to learn to read? No. Mary's father taught her long ago and they might just wanted to learn. I think they felt left out. Maybe you being here will take the pressure off. Well, I'm willing to learn if that's what it takes. Shalom. I come bearing apricots. <laughs> ah, it's a good day today. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> Shalom, Thomas. <sighs> ah, these are the light. Shalom. Shalom. Having mine under the tent. Is Rayma coming out? Uh, no, I don't think so. She's pretty intent on studying. Oh. Mary is <laughs> writing leaflet notices and invitations and sometimes crying. She went through something bad. I think she just needs time. Mm. And what about them? In the most generous explanation, we'd call that love. <laughs> That does not look like love. <laughs> <laughs> they all love our rabbi and want to follow him the right way. They just can't agree on what that right way is. Huh, sounds familiar. Thank you. I will take these to Rayma. Oh, and tell Rayma Philip found apples, but I wanted to bring her apricots because I know that her favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I will pass that along. Simon is the loudest. You played your part so well. My look of annoyance was the best I've ever given. Sophocles, Euripides, Aeschylus, they would kill for our acting skills. It certainly was a kind of tragedy. For him, for us, it was a triumph. And all tragedies have winners and losers. He was the one who brought up potential minerals. Yes, and then you acknowledged the possibility of salt and not giving anything away. I conceded the value, and we came off looking like good guys. Hmm. We bought a salt mine for the price of a country plot. Did you see his tears? That's common. People have emotional ties to the land. And then what, do we grow calluses on our eyes? They lighten up the sale of our lives. 
I did make a tidy profit on my Andy. Didn't know it'd ever be valuable. He'll never have to work another day in his life. You know, when I brought you on as my apprentice, they neglected to tell me that you did not have a sense of humor. <laughs> I do have a sense of humor. You are about to become a very wealthy man. Once our miners find the salt, we're going to live like kings. Kings of what? <laughs> There's only one true king in heaven, and everyone else, even Caesar, is enjoying illusions of power and wealth. Wow. Sooner or later, we all become dust. <laughs> There's that sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not oblivious, okay? I know that's right. But we have so few opportunities to get ahead in this Opportunity? World. It was a calculated deception. And it didn't... It didn't feel good. We used what God gave us, and now we'll have greater choices, we'll live better lives, more devotion. Finish your drink. Man was formed from Earth, and eventually he returns to it. The time in between. There has to be more to life than that. He's an orphan and a poet. I told you not to call me that. Hey, okay, I'm sorry. It's been a long week. Let's take some time off to rest. What I need is a life I could be proud of. Don't you want to do something that will really matter? That will be remembered throughout history. I appreciate your ambition. I really do. Oh, he's going to do something that's going to be remembered, all right. Every day. <laughs> Here's an advance. Let's take weeks off. Rest, go for walks, do something new. Hmm? Hmm. Really? Why not? You're the one that said there's more to life than making money. Thank you. I don't know what to say. Finish your drink. Uh, I think. Okay, it's question time. Question time with Leonardo Torres. Okay, the question is, how much of this is is actually biblical? Like, did it really start out this way? Do they do they tell you a little bit? I don't know what that accent was. Do they tell you a little bit about Judas and how he was before? Because. If there is something that at least hints that he was um, that he was kind and look looking to be good, okay, the answer is no. So okay, that that's out the window. Um, but nevertheless, that doesn't mean that we can't learn something from this. Correct? How many of us want to be de devoted and be dedicated to God? How many of us want to, to be, do the right thing? And then the moment that we are there and we're, we're a part of something big, something good, the moment that external forces threaten, threaten your, your well-being, you betray your, your, your group or you distance yourself from the group and not want anything to do with it because you're afraid of what might fall down, might fall on top of you, right? Um, even if this wasn't, you know, written biblically, or if it's not in the Bible, the fact that they added that here in the show, I can I can appreciate, right? Because there's there's someone out there who who was devoted to their church, much like I was devoted to my church when I was a Catholic. And then the moment that the priest threatened my position there, I was out. I was gone. Of course, I didn't betray the, the priest or I didn't sell him out. But I thought I wanted one thing. And then I was disappointed and threatened by it. And then I left. And now I'm back. Right? So, so, and so it goes. <laughs> uh, and it was... Then he leaves to betray Jesus, right? The only insight we have is when he questioned the woman that anointed Jesus' feet, say, says he, Judas, liked to take from the money bag. Ooh, okay. So, unfortunately, a lot of people have a price and they will, be, they will sell you out. <laughs> 
All right. Okay. Question time over. Let's go. The knoll east of the Nahalka River looks promising. But it's a knoll. He won't be high enough for people to see and hear him. Yes, and the trees to the south obstruct the view of the Sea of Galilee, which he specifically requested. Why does he need a view of the sea? I think he wanted to be high enough up. Ah, what about the hills north of Chorazin? Huh? There's plenty of height. His voice would carry. It's too steep of a climb. Ah. And the distance is too far for the people from Tiberius and Magdala. Mm -hmm. He said he wanted to keep within a day's walk from those cities. Maybe we're just looking too far north. What did he request? A grove of uh, juniper or gum trees on the backside where we could camp the night before? Yeah. It's like he already knows the place. Hmm? Yeah. Just have to find it. <laughs> I, I, you know what? Just uh, really quickly, real quick pause. I, I would have loved to have seen... I know that they kept, kept records or they had their record of what they saw when it came to Jesus. But I really wish that these apostles would have kept some kind of a personal journal so we could see a little bit deeper into who they were and what they were struggling with and how they were changed or moved by Jesus. I want to know what their, what their story is as far as like a student, you know, because if they were students of Jesus, I want to know what they, what it was that they were struggling with. I want to know what it is that, that what, personal issues they were battling with and how Jesus changed that to have seen like their accounts and even more beautiful would have been if Jesus himself would have kept some kind of written record about how he felt and how he thought and how, you know, write, writing down all these little beautiful little sayings, all these little uh, riddles as, as uh, Matthew called them or, and Simon um, would have been a beautiful thing to see. Right. Like just imagine, just imagine a few generations up from your, from your family. Imagine coming across your great 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 grandfather's or grandmother's uh, journal, personal journal, where they they wrote down what how they met or what they were struggling with and the things that they had to do in order to get the family moving forward in order for you to be here. Like that would have been. That would have been beautiful. MJ Sabi says, unfortunately, that was not the culture. Disciples would would have kept things out about themselves. Oh, would not have kept things about themselves. They tried to emulate their teacher in everything. Hmm. Yeah. That's too bad. <laughs> All right, here we go. No trespassing. Violators will be prosecuted. Shalom, shalom. Hope we mean no harm, sister. We're here on friendly business. Behind where you are. Is that a good view of the Sea of Galilee? Go away. <laughs> That's not very friendly. Uh, excuse me. Are you the owner? It's close to visitor. It's very important that we speak to him. This is probably the spot. What? Why? It's completely repellent. Exactly. That's it? <laughs> That's your whole story? Everything we know for certain established as fact by eyewitnesses in accordance with the law. <laughs> I know we can't prove it's the same person, but the pattern's too striking to ignore. It doesn't need to be the same person. That's what's wonderful. I will have Shimon dragged for this. To be fair, it was the secretary who called the charges Manusha, not Shimon himself. Secretaries don't put words in the rabbi's mouth. It's the other way around. Manusha. Manusha. My congregation and students will foam at the mouth when they hear this. Make a written record of your conversation with Shimon's secretary. Every word and file it with the clerk of the Special Council for False Prophecies at the Archive. It must be signed and dated by a ranking Levite. Do you understand my instructions? Yes, but why all the exactitude? Because when this Jesus of Nazareth amasses enough followers and enough detractors, it will get Rome's attention. And then everyone will know. Know what, Rabbi? That Shimon was well aware of these offenses and dismissed them. 
his obsession with reforming God's immutable law will be exposed for the negligent, lazy, dangerous abomination it is. Not just Shimon. We opened a case with the Sanhedrin, and Nicodemus dismissed it as immaterial. Nicodemus. I've long suspected the lamps were going dim in that house, if you get my meaning. Well, I don't know about that. I... Spread the word. Tell every scribe, Pharisee, Sadducee, Essen, priest, teacher, and Levite you know. Why, Rabbi? First, the facts. Self-identifies using a divine title from the prophet Daniel. Son of man. Claims authority to forgive sins. Violates Shabbat on multiple occasions and commands others to do so. Eats with tax collectors and sinners. Degenerate. Now, the speculation. The worst. <laughs> I don't have all day. One of John the Baptizer's students is among his followers, and there are rumors of a second. Delicious. We'll never be pestered by that freak again. In Capernaum, there were wow. women of ill repute seen at table with him at the tax collector's house. You're telling me women are among his followers? You asked for speculation. Keep going. He consorts with Gentiles, specifically the Ethiopian woman who knew his name and his origin. The last is very vague and small. Nothing is small when it comes to fidelity to God's law. The praetor of Capernaum ordered Jesus detained. When I spoke with his office, they made mention of the fourth philosophy. The zealots? It was just a passing comment. He must be out of his mind. That's all we have. You must make these confirmed facts and inferences made known far and wide, but never mention that Shimon or Nicodemus dismissed the case. The gullible masses will defer to their supposed wisdom, but then... When we reveal dated documentation showing that Shimon had early warning and did nothing, the house of his wretched grandfather Hillel will fall. And the house of Shammai will rise. These are men of God? Rabbi Shammai, respectfully, we didn't come here today seeking to influence which schools of thought. We came looking for someone who would care that a false prophet is deceiving our people. If that was your intent, you have succeeded. Everything you shared with me will make an appearance at my next Shabbat sermon. <sighs> Oh, boy. Matthew, look. Mary finished the notices. They're leaving to spread the word. I hope they can find a way to work together. What do you mean? They can't seem to agree on a single thing lately. Myself included sometimes. Oh, I've noticed. In some ways, it's to be expected. But not desired, surely. No, no. Mm. But it's what's bound to happen when you start something that's open to all, truly, all people. Zealots, even tax collectors. <laughs> people who have been through tough times. People both hesitant and skeptical, as well as bold and confident. I fit in one of those. to learn. Anybody else? As well as those learned and knowledgeable. Let's get back to work. How many sections are we up to? Nineteen. He's a little incomplete, huh? There is something about twenty that is more symmetrical. <laughs> Brevity is usually preferred. Which section stands out to you the most? Do not be anxious about your life, of course. Are there any sections that concern you? Give me your honest opinion. I know I don't have to say that, but... I'm going to go back a little bit, a little bit, but I just have a quick question for you all. Like he said that the, that the part that stands out to him is don't be, act, don't be anxious about your life. And he says, of course. Why? Why is this true for him? Why does this stand out to him? Don't be anxious about your life. Of course, like that stands out to him personally. Why is that? Why do you all think, Familia? Is he talking about his current life or is he talking about his past life and how he had to let go of his house, let go of his family to follow, to follow Jesus? Is he anxious about that or is he anxious about the future? Could he be anxious about, you know, his position there? Is he anxious about Jesus? What what could he 
what could he mean by of course like that's the part that worries him or, or that that stands out to him the most let me go back here a little bit right there i think it's his personality i think it's because he sees a lot of anxiousness around him in general okay guess to all of your consideration <laughs> I think it would stand out the, to most. Ah, it's saying about, uh, it's saying don't worry about your life and by proxy, don't worry about losing your life. Ooh, you never felt peace until with Jesus was always anxious, now is not. Ah, oh, I love learning from you all. He knows Matthew is just anxious. Matthew has struggles and has had to learn to trust God. Matthew likes certainty and routine. How his life was ordered and structured. I thought he said that because that is what everyone worries about. Ah, all of them could be true. Love it. Okay. Let's, let's continue. Zealots. Even tax collectors. People who have been through tough times. People both hesitant and skeptical, as well as bold and confident. People hungry to learn, as well as those learned and knowledgeable. Let's get back to work. Imagine Jesus telling you that. How many let's, sections are we up to? Let's get back to work. <laughs> 19. Here's a little incomplete, huh? There is something about 20 that is more symmetrical. You could always shorten it to 18. Brevity is usually preferred. Which section stands out to you the most? Do not be anxious about your life, of course. Are there any sections that concern you? Give me your honest opinion. I know I don't have to say that, but... The whole truth. You know I won't be offended. It's all very striking, but... If I do the math in terms of good news and the bad, it seems like there's not a lot of good news. Anyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery. Doesn't that make everyone an adulterer? <laughs> He's all, hmm? If your right eye causes you to sin, gouge it out. Wouldn't that lead to an entire population of people walking around with only one eye? Oh, <laughs> and this one. If anyone were to sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. Mm. Trees that bear bad fruit being cut down and torn into the fire. The gate is narrow and hard that leads to life. Depart from me, I never knew you. Do you realize how heavily laden your sermon is with these kinds of ominous pronouncements? <laughs> I haven't even named half of them. It's a manifesto, Matthew. I'm not here to be sentimental and soothing. I'm here to start a revolution. Well... Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. That isn't exactly... I said revolution, not revolt. I'm talking about a radical shift. Did you think I was just going to come here and say, hey, everyone, just uh, keep doing what you've been doing for the last thousand years since it's been going so great? Also, there's the beginning and the end. What about the beginning? My concern about the beginning is more logistical. Right now, your opening line is, you are the salt of the earth. I'm worried, particularly if it is windy, or if the crowd is larger than we expect, that people near the back will hear, salt the earth. And it will immediately call to mind a negative connotation. The Punic Wars? Yes. When Rome destroyed Carthage, they sowed the city with salt to make it barren and to curse anyone who would rebuild upon it. I share your concern about the opening line, but for different reasons. I think the sermon needs some sort of introduction, an invitation into what, as you have rightly pointed out, would be a complex and at times challenging set of teachings. What does you are the salt of the earth even mean? I'm not good at metaphor. <laughs> salt preserves meat from corruption. It slows its decay. I want my followers to be a people who hold back the evil of the world. Salt also enhances the flavor of things. I want my followers to renew the world and be part of its redemption. Salt can also be mixed with honey and rubbed on the skin for maladies. I want my people to participate 
in the healing of the world. Ah. Not its destruction. Then why not just say that? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Matthew. Allow me a little poetry, huh? <laughs> not everyone is like you. Some people like a little flavor. Read the songs of David or, or Solomon. I'm not going nearly as far with metaphor as Solomon. I'm reading him next. Well, good luck. He's probably... <laughs> <laughs> I told you. Did we catch all that that he said with, with salt? Right? That it... That it it holds back, the salt holds meat from going bad, right? So he wants the, his, excuse me, his followers to hold back the evil, right, of the world. That if you rub it with honey and apply it to your skin, it, can, it has healing properties. And that he wants us to participate in the healing of the world. He wants us to participate in the healing of the world. Participate. Which means that what, like, uh, some people I feel like, I feel like some people say are expecting Jesus to come and heal the world. He wants us to participate in that healing. Right? He wants us to be a part of that healing. So, how can we do that? Can we have any suggestions on how we can participate in the healing of the world? What are some things that we could do to participate? What sort of healing does the world need that we can provide or that we can participate in alleviating? Any suggestions? This one takes care of it all. <laughs> right? That one takes care of it all. That one takes care of it all. Look at your answers. Kindness and love. Feeding the hungry, loving your neighbor, right? Same thing. Feeding the hungry and the homeless, right? Show love and patience. See, some, some of your answers require you to give something, feeding the homeless, getting food and giving it. And some of your answers is a different type of giving. It's a giving that, that comes from deep within that never exhausts. You'll never run out of that kind of giving, right? As long as you have the love of God flowing into you. If God loves you so much, he pours all his love into you graciously without you asking for it or deserving it. And he pours all that love into you. And you pour that love into others, you'll never run out. You will never run out of that, that of love. So long as that, that's the source. Love becomes exhausting when you're giving of yourself something you have, you don't have, something you cannot give too much, your, your energy, your time, right? But when it comes from, the, from, from, from God, that source is never ending. It's a never ending uh, well of, of, of love, right? Spending time with someone. Love, loving them, caring for them, listening to them, helping them, right? I love all your answers. Um, I'm going to keep going, and then uh, Erica will keep posting your answers on the screen so you can take some ideas from one another and learn from one another. These things will make sense to some, but not to others. I don't want passive followers. Ooh. Those who are truly committed will peer deeply into it, looking for truth. But I do agree with you. We shouldn't begin with salt. You make a valid point. Good work. You could flip it with the next image. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. I could. Or whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. That one's inviting. Master, may I ask why you keep coming down to look at the camp? I love that he asks. May I have? A 
I'm going to need time. We have measures in place for crowd control. And we can set aside some of our men to assist your goat herds and shepherds, keeping the animals corralled on the other side of the mountain. My goat herd told me about your plans. But I don't like preachers. I don't care for crowds. You're not even offering to pay for the use of my space. We have no significant money to offer. We may be able to secure a loan. May. We have some people in our group who are skilled at negotiation. Why didn't you bring them? Do you know of any neighboring pastor similar to yours? Someone we could talk to. Look, I only came here because she said you'd pay for my drink if I heard you out, and I have. What about Product Association? What? If this man is as important as they say, and the sermon is as significant as they are predicting... I just don't care about any vagabond teacher. This is the man who's healed many, yes? The one we've heard about. Yes. Think of all the pilgrims that see him as more than a teacher. How many did you say? Hundreds? Perhaps thousands? Multitudes. Thousands of people having life-changing experiences on your land. They could see miracles. What happens when those pilgrims go to market for supplies? I mean, all those travelers, well, they associate your products with the feelings they have on the day. Coming from all over. Your products, your milk, your cheese, your wool, huh? Your name will be the only name they can trust. Multitudes. Fine. But if I find one piece of trash left behind, I'll sue for damages. You have our word. We'll leave it better than we found it. Good. <laughs> The mar <laughs> marketing pros over here. I think we just got the land. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> How can we ever think? <laughs> you see, boy, I have not led you to ruin. Life is a negotiation. <laughs> You're right. You're right. Opportunities are everywhere staring us in the face. And the only difference between us and most people is that we have the tools to take advantage. Now I'm learning. And I'm telling you, I don't want to be in business forever. I just want to make enough money to make my own choices. Unlike you, I believe there is more to life than deals and titles. You know what would be really interesting? What's that? See this preacher in person. I've been hearing about him. I'm really glad to hear you say that. I want to see him too. It's settled. Oh, I love the music. She doesn't need any flyers. <laughs> oh, love the music is building. Ooh. Ah. advertising something that might not happen what if he never comes back go to sleep and he's not here we wake up and he's not here correct it's because you haven't got when to the heights up, i've seen him with matthew <laughs> he has to go to the high the highest point or make his bed in the deep because <laughs> he's there <laughs> every morning for the past week i think he's just trying to get it right <laughs> 
Can he get anything wrong? I mean, for the people. What if we've all been misled? How can you say that? You saw what happened at Ghana. Everyone, calm down. I'm sorry, I'm just nervous. We're all tired from a long day. We need to rest for tomorrow and go meet the others at the mountain early to help set up. What if no one shows up? What if everyone shows up? Either way, Simon is right. We should rest. You think I'm going to get a wink of sleep? I just want to make sure I've done everything I can for him. You always <laughs> do. You'll sleep well now. Matthew. Matthew. Bye bye. I've got it. <clears throat> you open it? Yes. What is it? A map. A what? Directions where people should look to find me. Okay. <laughs> Give me a moment. <clears throat> Where people should look to find me. I'm ready. Have I? Blessed are the poor in spirit. Oh. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn. For they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. For they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. I love how he's looking right at him when he said that. Rejoice and be glad. For your reward will be great in heaven. Yes. But how is it the map? If someone <laughs> wants to find me, those are the groups they should look for. Oh! And then? You are the salt of the earth. <sighs> wow. Just, just wow. <laughs> right? Wow, right?
Come on, familia. Jesus. Yes. Please come. We'd like to show you something. I'm preparing, Ima. Fine. We'll come to you. Listen to your mother. <laughs> this is no good. What? Why not? You'll blend into the rocks. To the people in the back, you'll be a disembodied voice coming from a slate quarry. You need a pop of color. <laughs> you know, I know what the prophecy says about my appearance. Is this your attempt to change it? <laughs> the symbol of peace, like water in the sky. Mm. Red, a symbol of passion, blood, sacrifice, love. Oh. Purple, the royalty, kingship, gold, warmth, wisdom, light, the sun. Mm. Well? Well, uh, we have no glass or no still waters to peer into for a reflection. And even if we did, I can't tell you how little I care about how I look. <laughs> Ima. <Blue>. Yes. <laughs> the symbol of peace. Our prince of peace. Rema. Purple. Because of the night I first met you. Grapes. Wine. Mary. Purple also. Royalty. Tamar. Blue. It's a calming color. It softens your hard edges. I have hard edges. <laughs> <laughs> You've been known to say hard things. <laughs> Just wait. <laughs> what up to 3,000? Time people are showing up. It will be 4,000 by the time we start. In no time. Should we even tell him? I don't want him to be surprised when he comes around to this place. Is he capable of surprise or being thrown off? Oh, this is not good. If more people show up or if one more thing goes wrong, this could be a disaster. Am I allowed? <laughs> you could see the weight coming off of his shoulders in that moment. Where's Dasha? She's just empty and some others. They secured a place at the front. Eden! Yes? More heartbeats. Get over here. I need a tiebreaker. <laughs> this is Simon's wife, Eden. Hello. <laughs> This is even bigger than I thought. Oh, I had a feeling. You had a feeling. I want to see him. Oh, I want to find a place we can hear him. I'll come and find you. I won't be long. See if we can find one of his followers, one of the men we met. Let them know we can help them. They clearly need it. They look like they're with him. E excuse me, son. May I have a very brief word? This is amazing. Oh, uh, excuse me. Do, do you know where I should stand to hear him? To hear the teacher from Nazareth. Nazareth? He performs miracles. They are saying he could be the one. We are not going to miss a word. You could do a lot worse than to follow us. <laughs> fine, I love him. I love him. I want to have that personality when I get older. <laughs> You know, older, older. Today is one of those days when it's definitely better to be blind and not deaf. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. If, if we're moving to hear the teacher, why are you turning off the path the others follow? We're just going to say hello to some old friends before the show. Not a show, Barnaby. It was a show at Zebedee's house. <laughs> He kind of reminds me of like a falcon or a hawk, right? See his nose, the way he stands there, just watching everything. Atticus, I mean, not the horse. This is the line. Five cubits back, everyone, please. And what if we don't? <laughs> You think we'd stay home for this? Ima! 
Are you looking skinny? Yeah, I, I'm not. Are I'm you eating? Skinny. No, I am eating. Are you sure? Yes, 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 I'm fine. Oh, what's the answer? He's, he's on the other side. I actually have to go downtown. He's on now. Get back. <laughs> okay, okay. And, and, and no heckling, you two. No promises. Seven. What? Hi, went with the blue. Good choice. What are you thinking about? Your father. Have we never got to see any of this? My father. Which one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I mean. I do miss him. But I'm glad you're here. I am proud of you. Maybe wait to say that until after I'm done. Because <laughs> I mess up in front of such a big crowd. Whatever you say will be beautiful. It is pretty good, actually. <laughs> Master, it's time. It's time. I've waited a long time for season three because I thought they were going to do the sermon here in, in this season. We heard some guy was going to tell jokes on the hillside or something. <laughs> <laughs> There's always jokes. Oh, Matthew. You made it. You made it. Good to see you. Yes. 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 Wait. It's you. You're the man from the public house. I, I just follow them. I don't actually know what I'm doing here. Come on over. Well, we just wanted to say shalom. We'll go find a good spot. Please. Stick around. Hey, Simon. This is the man who got us the mountain, the pastor. He convinced the landowner it was worth his while. Ah, good work. I'm Simon. Judas. Welcome, Judas. I'm sure you're going to love this sermon. Oh, I wouldn't miss it. And this actor has such kind eyes too, right? Like, I think they did a great job choosing him. Look at, <laughs> never mind. I was gonna make a joke, but it's not appropriate. <laughs> it wasn't an inappropriate joke. It was just, I shouldn't. <laughs> Kick going on here. See the Romans on the sides? The heartbeat. Fantastic. Brilliant. I think there's extras. We will uh, mute this for now. And then if extras come out, I will unmute it. But uh, wait, let me turn up the volume. Just hit, the vol hit that button. Fantastic. I'm really glad that we got a chance to catch up on this. Um, it's It's been very insightful to catch up and to know where we're going to be tomorrow when we watch it in theaters. If you haven't gotten your tickets, you know where to get them. There's a link in the description down below. They There are theaters everywhere. And it's important that we get to see this 
opening weekend tomorrow saturday and sunday will determine whether or not they will play it longer in those theaters and whether or not also i'm not saying that they won't invite them back but it will also play a big part if whether or not um the chosen or dallas or any of the team gets to put anything else on the big screen and we want that we definitely want that i have um i've been waiting for season three because i thought that the sermon was actually going to be uh in season two I'm glad that they left us hanging here like this in this way. Um, I'm so excited. Um, Erica, please remind me to bring tissues tomorrow because I'm pretty sure I'm going to be bawling my eyes out. And um, and uh, we will be reporting. We're going to be reporting. We're going to see if we can catch a few people um, afterwards to tell us what they thought about season three. And then we're going to be reporting with a video f a Saturday morning to let you all know what we thought about it. And, and of course, no spoilers. We're going to keep it spoiler free, but I'm really excited about this. I want a big thank you to everyone from The Chosen, from the staff of The Chosen, and from um, Angel Studios for allowing us to, to get together here and to, to do this. Um, it's been really fun. I've learned so much, um, not just about the series, not just about about Jesus, but about us as human beings and our and our place here and our struggles and the things that we are overcoming and that we will overcome together, together, right? So it's important that we all stay, stick together. Familia, I want you all to know whether you are a Christian or non-Christian like I was a few months back um, or a few years back, or if you're an atheist like I was a few years back, everyone is welcome here. You're all welcome here. We ask that you treat each other with respect and that you're loving and caring in the in the comments. I love that some of you have would taken it upon yourselves to welcome new people and to make people feel uh, welcomed and feel at home. Um, all of this is really important to me because it makes us be obedient. We are to love one another as he loved us. And I love that you all are putting this into practice, that you're putting it into practice here in the live chat. And hopefully you are putting it into practice uh, with your with your family at home, with your literal neighbors, and with your um, with your neighbors in the street too, your car, you know, the person in in the car next to you that you're respectful, that you let them, you know, ahead of you, or maybe you're in line with a bunch of groceries and you see the person behind you only has one or two, three items, and you let them pass. It's not going to it's not going to kill you to let somebody else uh, pass, but always be kind, always be loving, always be Christ like. That is what's important, right? We are maps. I love that, Melissa. Thank you so much. We are maps. I love that sequence, by the way. I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna watch that again because I love all of those lines, first of all. But I love that he said that that's a that's a map. I because he said that if you ever want to find him, all you need to do is find people like that. That's brilliant. That's beautiful because it reminds me of that other passage that says that not everyone who says Lord, Lord will be in will be allowed into heaven. Um, and someone protesting like, hey, we, we casted out demons in your name and we were, you know, shouting in the rooftops or mountaintops, whatever it was. I'm paraphrasing um, that uh, that you are Lord. And he says, yeah, but when I was hungry, you didn't feed me when I was thirsty. You didn't you didn't give me thirst when I was alone and in the cold or whatnot. You didn't shelter me. And they were all confused, like what are you talking about? And then the people that the other group will say, when did we feed you? And he says, look, what you did to each other, you did to me. What you do to each other, you do to me. So when you see someone out, another human being, you are to treat them like if it was Christ themselves. Obviously, I'm not saying bow down to them and worship them. No, but you are to act as though you are, are treating them like you would treat Jesus. Because with that same love that he pours into you, you're supposed to love others. And I love this. This has been a huge lesson for me re-watching these. Um, I, I've, I've loved these conversations with you all. We will have more conversations like this. So I saw that somebody asked what's going to happen with season three. And I know people are popping out. And I understand it's really late for some of you. Um, but you asked what's going to happen with season three and this channel. So, yes, we're watching it in theaters. We're not going to be allowed to stream it. Um, anytime soon on the channel. So we're not going to have a watch party like this anytime soon um, because we want to make sure that everybody sees it in theaters and we don't have uh, any spoilers for people. We can, however, still have discussions and still have conversations and we'll let you know ahead of time which conversations are have spoilers and which ones 
have no spoilers if we get into a conversation about something that happened. But I will be reporting um, after each episode what we think about it and um, and what we liked and maybe a lesson that we learned, right? So Erica and I are going to be watching episode one and two tomorrow at 6 p.m. in Orange County. Uh, let's see. Oh, here we go. Let's watch this. I'll give you the truth. I love that God simply spoke and the world came into being. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay, we're doing that. Thing. Okay. okay, one more time. I suppose I, I love the beginning. Me too. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Everything you just okay. said. Nine in the morning, we're out of here. We get to the leper colony. We stop by there just a few minutes. <laughs> just a few minutes. Hello, lepers. <laughs> Sons of thunder. Aren't you supposed to still be filming? What am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> Try that again. <laughs> Fishing, not filming. <laughs> I'll bring him some bread. I thought most people. Wait, I'm not for that. <laughs> Can you give me a one here? <laughs> okay. okay. Now, only if. Uh, you played your part so well. The Renaissance was, the, was, was the best I've ever given. Sophocles, Euclides. Oh, sorry, let me do that again. <laughs> Euclides? Euclides? That's not a human being. That was fun. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm like, I'm leaving. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Going now. Uh, have fun with your cousin. Well, I'm I'm I never thought I'd learn, live to see one. Sorry. Huh? <laughs> Thank I'm... you for letting Go for it. Okay. No, you go ahead. Okay, you first. Me first? Yes, you. Thank you for letting me see that. I'll do whatever it takes to learn. <laughs> go ahead. Hello. Hello. I come bearing apricots. Ah, we're still talking. Okay. <laughs> what happened is James and John realized that we are in Samaria here to plant seeds, not to burn bridges. <laughs> Anything Master. else you'd like to say? Um, take a moment. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Let's do it again, please. Jesus of Nazareth. Don't you want to do something that would really matter and be remembered throughout history? <laughs> yes, I would like to. <laughs> Here's our traditional Jewish greeting for you. <laughs> I don't need protest. Oh, my face hurts from smiling so much right now. Just how you send little John and <laughs> <laughs> reset background. You want to I said the little, and then I had a moment of like, Baker, second six, soft six. If a man taketh his brother's wife, it is impurity. Pick up, you can pick up the pace even more. And okay. It's, and it's if a man takes. Oh. We're not, we're not doing taketh like. <laughs> no, we're, all right, fair enough. It's right there in the law of Moses. If a man taketh his brother's wife. Take us. <laughs> right there in the law of Moses. If a man taketh his brother's wife, it is in. <laughs> keep doing it. <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> be all right. Such a warrior. Crazy kid. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe she'll be glad we got a title. The big title. <laughs> what about Ava? Abba would be proud. He would. Go! Strike! Go! Go! <laughs> sorry to wake you, Andy. Right, sorry, guys. We have a train that's just blurring its horn. So let's just wait. <laughs> With all due respect, Nathaniel, this... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no scene necessary. <laughs> 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 Somebody mowing the lawn back there? <laughs> no promises. Let's go. That's it. All right. Excellent. All right. I love it. All right. So we are ready for tomorrow. God bless every single one of you. Um, I hope you have fun. And if you, if you watch it, uh, I would appreciate it if you take pictures, tag us in your photos when you're going to the theaters um, tomorrow to watch this. Um, I love everybody. I love that you all have um, given us your time and your attention and your love and support here today. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's uh, it's dinner time. Hi, Erica. I want to say bye. We got, we got Erica in the house here I'm today. I'm really dark right here, but I just wanted to say bye. Let me see. Hang on. Just one second. I can fix that. See? Bye. Turning the light here. Boom. There Wait, she is. is yeah, She's so beautiful. Isn't she so beautiful? Yeah. I'll, I'll let you know today. She was just, slaying the day today oh my goodness she was cooking she was baking <sighs> she was making ezekiel in her tummy she <laughs> was she was delivering food she was doing all kinds of awesome stuff today no oh, i was i was really busy but it was okay it's all <laughs> worth it and then in the chat too just boom 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 boom, 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 boom. and she was in there in the in the, in the chat room <laughs> doing my very best sometimes it's hard can, can you step on this side and yes. show us show us baby ezekiel so face this way or yeah, face face, face that way Keep going, keep going, keep going. Boom, right there. Look at that. Would you look at this? Yeah. Step back a little bit. Uh, back this way. A little bit. Way. Just a little bit. Right there, right there, right there. Beautiful. Yeah, he's, uh, he's there. <laughs> kicking me. He's actually kicking me. I think he's hungry. Oh, goodness. Okay, so yeah, so we're hungry. We're about to... <laughs> we're about to have dinner, but I want to thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you. We will uh, maybe see you tomorrow. Maybe quizás, perhaps. But I want to thank you all so much for joining us for taking the time to watch for answering our questions for being so polite being so loving to one another thank you for uh being so welcoming of each other thank you for watching all the other videos mm -hmm. i see you all in the comment sections we appreciate everything that you do even though we do not deserve it but we appreciate it and uh we're gonna be well, yeah, well, 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 we're off, but we're going to close it off by thanking you, Father, Father. Thank you so much for allowing us to get together, for allowing us to see this beautiful story. Thank you for the peace that you bring us. Thank you for the peace that you gave mm -hmm. us in the in the live chat. And thank you for for keeping the evil away from us. Thank you for the healing that you're putting in place. Thank you for all the beautiful lessons that you gave us. Thank you for bringing us closer to you through your son. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Father, we'd like to thank you so much for uh, loving us, for, for always pouring your love on, on every single one of us. Thank you for the healing that you're giving each and every one of us today. Thank you for providing for us, for giving us uh, our, our, our daily bread. Thank you so much for keeping us close, keeping us close to your heart and keeping your love. Um, keep. Thank you for pouring your love onto us. Mm -hmm. Thank you for helping us spread your love. Please keep your light close to us so that we can see opportunities of, of spreading your love so that somebody else can experience it through us and that they come closer to you and that they spread love to others and spread love in their homes. Father, we, we ask you that you please take us away from our addictions, take us away from our temptations, take us away from everything that, lead, that draws our attention away from you. 
um, keep us in your light, keep us in your in your care, keep us in your love. Father, thank you so much. In your precious son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Familia, we'll see you all tomorrow. Gracias. Love you guys. Hasta